Good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. Peter's at Home this Wednesday morning. We shall be using the Iona service, which you'll find on page 20 of your blue booklet, if you have one. And if you don't, don't worry, because uh, much of it is up on screen. And also welcome to all those who will watch the service later on. The Fellowship of the Believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Be still and listen to the day. Touch the breeze with the quiet of your soul. Let the turbulence of the hurly-burly rushing pass you by. Let God bless you with a quiet whisper, which in all the day's doing keeps a calm, silent centre in your being. Let us open our lives to God and ask his forgiveness and grace. On the poverty of our seeing and the poverty of our believing, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. On the poverty of our giving and on the poverty of our following, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. On the poverty of our loving and the poverty of our living, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To all who turn to him, Christ says, your sins are forgiven. He also says, follow me. Amen. Lord, thanks be to God. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm for today is Psalm 78, verses 17 to 31. And we say it together. But they continued to sin against him, rebelling in the wilderness against the Most High. They willfully put God to the test by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God. They said, can God really spread a table in the wilderness? True, he struck the rock and water gushed out, streams flowed abundantly. But can he also give us bread? Can he supply meat for his people? When the Lord heard them, he was furious. His fire broke out against Jacob, and his wrath rose against Israel. For they did not believe in God or trust in his deliverance. Yet he gave a command to the skies above and opened the doors of the heavens. 
He rained down manna for the people to eat. He gave them the grain of heaven. Human beings ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat. He let loose the east wind from the heavens and by his power made the south wind blow. He rained meat down on them like dust, birds like sand on the seashore. He made them come down inside their camp, all around their tents. They ate till they were gorged. He had given them what they craved. But before they turned from what they craved, even while the food was still in their mouths, God's anger rose against them. He put to death the sturdiest among them, cutting down the young men of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now Veronica is going to bring us our reading from the Old Testament. The reading is from Exodus chapter 16, verses 1 to 5 and 9 to 15. The whole Israelite community set out from Elim and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. Then Moses told Aaron, say to the entire Israelite community, come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked towards the desert. And there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord, your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. For the word of God in Jesus, for God's wisdom all around us, for God's word and wisdom in us. Thanks be to God. And we now say the canticle together. God of the ordinary, we praise you. You take the drabness of our thoughts and brighten them into vivid imagination. You take our everyday lives and transform them into holy, precious moments. You take our meagre offerings and multiply them into an abundance of delight. Extraordinary God, you light up our thoughts, our lives, ourselves with the wonder of your call. With everything we are and have, we praise you. Amen. And now Alison will read us 
um, the reading from the Gospels. This morning's reading is from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 to 9. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. For the word of God in Jesus, for God's wisdom all around us, for God's word and wisdom in us. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Veronica and Alison, for our readings this morning. And now BJ is going to bring us her thoughts on the reading. Good morning. This morning reading from, reading from Matthew's Gospel stops short of Jesus explaining to his disciples the meaning of this parable. <clears throat> the farmer is God, the seed is the message of faith, and the different types of ground culminating in the good soil are the hearts and minds of the people. Whoever has ears, let them hear, says Jesus. So Heavenly Father, open our hearts and our ears and our minds to receive your word this morning and help us to act on them. Amen. A few questions for us to ponder. Do you consider yourself to be an evangelist? How many people in your Christian life have you led to God? How many seeds of faith have you sown in others? Today would have been my mum's 101st birthday. She, along with my dad, sowed the seeds of the Christian faith in my sister and me. Before she said goodnight, we would say the Lord's Prayer together. They may not have gone to church regularly, but they both had a strong faith and held their Christian principles of caring for others and sharing everything they had and teaching us to do the same. I can't tell you how many people must have been involved in sowing, in sowing the seeds to bring me freely to make the decision to follow Jesus at the tender age of 28. I'd always considered myself a Christian, but I decided on that day to give my life fully to Christ. And the rest, as they say, is history. Who sowed the seeds of faith in you? Or did you even notice? If you look back and you remember those brief conversations or something on the radio or TV or something that you read that spoke to you, each one of us must make our own decision about being a disciple of Christ. No one can force us to make the decision. Christ invites us to follow him. The soil of ours and other hearts and minds can change over time. God never gives up with the seed planting or the preparation of our hearts and minds into the good soil that will receive his gift of love the knowledge of his grace and the joy of being his child. In the whole of my 38 years as a follower of Jesus, I can count on the fingers of both hands, the people I've been privileged to pray with as they've made their own commitment to being a disciple of Christ. That works out at not even one person a year. 
there have been, been a greater number who, through the grace of God, I have discipled. And there may be thousands in whom God has used me to plant the seeds of faith without me even knowing. After telling the story of how I came to faith to a group of friends who thought I was bonkers because I went to church on a Sunday and I could be having a lie in. One friend a few days later came to me and said, you said your life had changed when you made the decision to follow Jesus and I can see that. I want my life to change. How do I give myself to him? I will never forget that day. We may plant the seeds, but it's God who prepares hearts to receive them, waters them with his love and brings them to fruit. And though it may take a day, a month or years, a new disciple is born, following Jesus and filled with the Holy Spirit. And we may have been part of that journey. What a day that must be for God. There is more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner entering the kingdom of God. Let's go back to the questions that I asked at the beginning. Do you consider yourself to be an evangelist? Some people will nod at this and some people will shake their heads. You may not consider yourself to be an evangelist, but I can tell you that you are, you undoubtedly are. Evangelism isn't about standing on a street corner, waving a Bible about and shouting at people, you're doomed. It's about being who you are, a follower of Jesus and sowing the seeds of faith in others. How many people in your Christian life have you led to God? You may have done this in person, but you will almost certainly have been involved in leading others to faith without even knowing. How many seeds of faith have you sown in others? The answer to that is millions. By a word, an action, an invitation done in the spirit of Christ, all those are a seed of the gospel of love and grace. All we can do is pray that God will use us to grow his kingdom and let him lead us to the hearts that he has prepared and the ears that are open to hear. We invite people to explore in many different ways. We can offer our personal stories or testimonies, if you like, of how we have experienced God working in our lives to the one who has ears to hear. And they will all be different. But central to each story will be one amazing person. Jesus Christ, our wonderful, amazing and mighty Lord and Saviour, who welcomes us home with unconditional love and forgiveness and wants us to be his friends. So today, notice the seeds that you might be sowing. If there's anyone watching this on YouTube later on and you want to get in touch and talk more, then to be, please contact us. The details are on our Church Near You website. Seeds sown are seeds of love and God will honour those. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, by your grace, you have called us to be evangelists and to make disciples of other people. But we can't do this alone. We need the help and grace of you, your Son and the Holy Spirit. Help us today to notice when we sow seeds of faith in others and help us to rejoice when we hear of one person who has come to faith in you and rejoice with the angels. Amen. Thank you, BJ. Let us just take a few moments to consider the words that BJ has brought to us this morning. So now let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the creed.
We believe in God, the maker and shaper of our pathways, who sent Jesus to show us the narrow way, and who is the beginning and ending of our travelling. We believe in Jesus Christ, the sharer of our flesh, who entered and experienced the human journey and who walks beside us on the road. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the midwife and nurturer of our potential, who drove Jesus into the desert and who calls us now to cast off from the shore. We believe in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the shaper, sharer, and stirrer of our journeys. And we recommit ourselves to following their way. Amen. And now we say the collect for today. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And of your great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now Rachel is going to lead us in prayer. God of peace, whose son Jesus Christ returned from the dead, guide us into the ways of peace and mercy. Help us to do everything that is good and build us up to be a holy dwelling place for you, our God the same Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Holy Father, empower all whom you have called to be bishops, pastors and teachers, to be good soil. Give them wisdom and vision in the leading of your people. Pray for any who are seeking out the straying and the lost. Courage to the despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give guidance to all who seek to guide or reconcile others. Protect all who are working with divided peoples, all peacekeeping forces, and those who seek to maintain order. Pray especially at the moment for all those working to combat COVID, those working on vaccine rollout programmes, and for our NHS and other medical people around the world who are dealing with unprecedented issues and problems and numbers of people seeking. in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, surround with love all who are having difficulties in their relationships. We pray for all who are feeling betrayed or neglected, for all who are suffering from marriage breakdown, for children of broken homes or homes of hatred and violence. We pray, Lord, for all those struggling at the moment as COVID restrictions lift in this country. We pray that the tolerance and acceptance of people's worries and anxieties at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, 
be with all who are harassed and helpless, feel alienated or hostile. Those like those without would like seed without good soil. We remember all who have lost their way. May they all know the love and care of the good self. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray today for all those who are ill at this time. We call before you all those on our traffic light prayer list. In a time of quiet, and before you, all those known to us personally who are ill at this time and in need of prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoice with all who are in the safety of your keeping, in your kingdom, and for all saints in glory. We pray for our loved ones departed. We may come to share with them in eternal life. We pray today, especially Annie Fairclough, Stephen Richards, Stacy Smith, Doc Roberts. Jean Hansen, Andrew Bucklow, Sheila Castledine, and Kathleen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray especially today for the young lad that's fallen into the river at Barrow. We pray for the police who are still searching for him. We pray that he may be found safe and well. We think of his family at this time, for the worry and the anxiety that they are facing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for all those things and people that have blessed us this week and in our lives that have brought us to know you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Rachel. And now let us sing our peace hymn to one another. God. 
Before we come to the blessing and the dismissal, I'd just like to think, thank all those who've taken part in today's service and uh, wish you all a very happy and safe week. Um, but it'd be nice to see you again on Sunday. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and those you love and keep you all safe this day and forevermore. Amen. Send us out. Send us out to seek wisdom. Send us out in peace. Send us out. Send us out to do justice. Send us out in hope. Send us out. Send us out to be loving. Send us out in joy. Go now with God's blessing. Go in justice and love. Go and love your neighbour. Go and respect the earth. Go and befriend strangers. Go and make peace. Go in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.